So I imagine many people have been watching State of Electronics are somewhat familiar with the process of making electronics. But every piece of electronics is usually housed in uh, uh, some plastic or metal or some sort of casing to protect it. So the opportunity to go and see a plastics factory was a great experience because it's completely different from uh, electronics. One of the first injection moulding companies that we visited was Jaifu. And I found this particularly interesting because I've had a lot of experience with electronics assembly not so much with injection moulding. And it was just one of the most amazing, <laughs> you know, mechanical workshops you've ever seen. So for somebody who's, I guess, got, gotten to see quite a lot of electronics manufacturing, there's still a pretty big, big buzz for myself when I get to see a mechanical manufacturing just because I haven't seen as much of this and I certainly hadn't seen something to the scale. So Jaifu basically manufactures, amongst other things, injection moulded plastics. One of the things that you need to do, if you want to make a finished commercial product, make it so that physically it is exactly the way you want, not just an off-the-shelf plastic case with your circuit board in it. Most electronics usually are put into plastic injection molded housing. Jaifu was, was fascinating. They produce the plastic housings for some of the world's major phone charger brands. We met Jimmy. Jimmy has a really long lifetime of experience with injection molding and so on. He's worked at Foxconn in the past. And actually have somebody as experienced as Jimmy take us through those processes and explain what the processes did. I think he said he had around 58 years of experience experience in manufacturing, something like that. It's insane. Jaifu was my first experience seeing hard tooling being made and injection moulding. It was definitely really interesting to see just the kind of production quantity that they can produce there. And they're a full go-to-wire setup, so you can turn up to those guys and say, I want to injection mould no watch. It starts with the idea for a design and an engineer will sit down with the CAD program and they will design exactly how they want the finished product to look. And they would design the part, design the tool, which is a lot of work. What it really did was open my eyes to the possibilities of injection moulding. That's something I've had a lot of experience with. So we got to see the whole process. The first part we really walked through was the tool making aspect of Jaifu. We saw the machines that make the tooling. So it was actually fantastic to be able to get up close and personal with the tools and be able to see sort of the runners, injection points, the, the pins, all the things that go towards making the tool. I haven't done, I've done a bit of my own tool design, certainly a lot of design for injection moulding. So once the design has been created in CAD software on the computer, it needs to be converted into a mould or what they call a tool. And they showed how they make the dies and then how the dies are transported and put into the injection moulding machines, how the, uh, the plastic pallets are fed in, and we got to see some of the machines running. So they have a large number of, of injection moulding machines up to 600 tonnes or something of pressure, which is huge. Which is like the size of a small bus. Before going to China, everybody told you how expensive tooling was, and it was one of the big things that kind of put people off manufacturing was how expensive these tools were made to make. If you are only going to make 10 of something, it's very different to making 10,000. And the particular type of tool depends on things like the material that will be used and also the production volume. I didn't really understand prior to going to this factory why plastics, why this was the case and why it was so important to have the tooling done. I thought it was kind of an extra option that you could just avoid. You may have heard that tooling is, a, is an expensive process and going to the factory showed us why. It's a tedious process, it's very intensive and there's a lot of checking that needs to be done all the way through it. For a short run, it's really common to use something like a silicon mould. The silicon mould you can do a dozen parts, but then you've got to make a new mould. At the other end, you can get this 3D printed stuff, which is ones and twos, or even CNC machine stuff, which is still small quantity. But if you're in production, if you're going to make more than a few thousand of something, you probably want to tool it. For longer term use, you want something much harder. That's an expensive process, but the economics works out in the end because the part price is much, much lower. Cost effectiveness you can't beat injection molding. So typically they will use something like aluminium or mild steel for medium production runs and they'll use very hard steel like a tool steel for large production runs. So you, you've got these tools that minimum will make 100,000 parts, maybe up to a million shots. Depending on how you look after it and as long as you're not pumping glass filled plastics and things you can usually get a million to 10 million parts out of a tool and even then the operation to repair it is usually pretty simple. You just resurface it and away you go. I hadn't seen moulds up close but for, you know, for quite small components the moulds are quite large the, the part may be the size of a baseball, but the tool that makes it is the size of a, a big TV. We saw the workshops where they were producing very intricate moulds with all sorts of complicated internal slide actions. Huge great lump of hard tool steel, and they've got to machine it 
harden it, EDM it back to shape, texture it, assemble the tool with all the ejectors and the sliders and the runners and the feed points. The tooling process is very sophisticated. Designing a tool is not easy and designing a tool that has caters for a complicated shape the tool itself will have a lot of sliders and moving parts in it. If you want to mould something with an undercut, you can have a slider that will get in there and do that for you. They're just masterpieces, those tools. The first step is to effectively make it, well, I guess, what would be a positive mould. The tool itself can be very difficult to make if it's done using something like tool steel. And watching a factory make hard steel tools, that blew my mind. Machining out basically the negative of what would be the, the physical product, then taking that out to the next process, which might involve something like EDM or spark erosion. And so there was a very interesting process called spark erosion, where they make a model of the part, and then there is a machine which will very slowly etch that part out of a piece of tool steel. The spark erosion machines that can take many days if not weeks to, to gradually etch out very very fine patterns you know or almost about like atom by atom removing the part and, and produce the the molds for making the enclosures and it just takes forever the machine holds the master over the top of the tool steel water flows through it and then it uses a process called spark erosion where an electric current will remove very small portions of the tool steel only a few atoms at a time so it can take days for the machine to make this this particular tool it will just very slowly move the master up and down while water is flowing through and the electric current is flowing the result can be a tool that is made out of an extremely hard steel and it will be able to produce a very large number of parts and it's also very accurate but it takes quite a long time to produce that block of the tool is taken on to further processing which involves polishing so that you actually get the final surface finish that would be reflective of the product being manufactured it goes to a hardening process which means once it's gone through the hardening process changing any part of the mold is incredibly difficult lots of metrology you could be able to measure things very accurately I think this is where we start talking about manufacturing as a craft rather than just a process because some parts have to be finished off by hand not just the machine, you have to get you know your little rasp and, and, and smooth that off, but just to the right degree. It gets assembled as part of a larger cubicle arrangement with um, various layers that hold the, the mould in place so that uh, plastic can be injected in along tubes and then also, very importantly, that you can then eject the made final product out of the, uh, of the mould. You'll pump 10 or 20 tonnes of material through this tool and every time it opens, you get exactly the part you wanted. In terms of demystifying, I guess it gives you an insight into why this, why this takes time and why it costs so much money and that you do not make a mistake when you specify your tooling because it will really affect your time to market. The scale of the factory was definitely incredible. We were also then able to observe some of these tools running in the machines. They'd take the big heavy tool, load it into a 500 tonne press and pump plastic in. And it would squish it together and then come apart and then you'd just get a, you know, a piece of plastic at the end of it. And it's a very, very fast way of getting a part repeatedly made out of a tool. And we were able able to actually even see some of the tools as multi-cavity tools so they were able to manufacture more than one part at a time. They could injection mold you know hundreds of these things in seconds. Just being able to walk through the giant warehouse of injection molding and just the scale and being able to just take parts off the off the press and just feeling they're still warm and thousands and thousands of bits that they churn through each day. We saw the machines to run prototypes and for them prototype run might be many hundreds of units not just one or two. We were actually able to see things like over molding so we had a two-part process and this was one that was done with a sort of like a phone charger plug so you had the one element that was injection molded then the operator actually insert the prongs which was the two metal pins and then there was a secondary injection molded process almost like an over mold to seal that part. Looking at how the injection molding machines work and how it's all very automated and you could see how parts were made and then put together and then even ultrasonically welded together things like that. You can get special grades of plastic which you can electroplate something that just looks like a, a a rough piece of plastic suddenly looks a million dollars because it's plated in this lovely shiny mirror finish. We saw these machines pushing out really high quality product. When, when you start looking at what it takes to make a little plastic product that you buy in the supermarket, wow, there's a huge investment in that and they're millions of dollars a piece those tools. But when you can show people that actually you're going to spend a lot of money but you're going to get this immaculate piece of ground hard steel that will make your part for the next 50 years, you go, okay, that's worth paying for and you can start to understand how valuable that is. So visiting Jaifu was interesting. It was quite a very, very different to an electronics line where cleanliness is everything. It was much more mechanical focused. And it felt more like a workshop, you know, it was dirty, there was metal, it was, you know, that 
kind of vibe. Whereas beforehand, with the with the like assembly places or the PCB manufacturing places, they'd been more clean and sterile. So it was an interesting difference. It was a bit like the scene at the end of the Terminator, with you know sparks everywhere and you know machinery overhead and cranes and heavy stuff being moved around and you know, stuff piled in the corner. Many hundreds of kilos these molds, so there are gantry cranes moving them around the factory. Yeah, it feels big, loud, noisy. Really, an industrial environment. Yeah, it was quite an interesting experience. It's nice to see the progression where you, you can build something in, in your own space with a you know, 3D printer and a milling machine, then go and get that pro, uh, prototype in China at small scale, and then knowing that ultimately you're going to move up to one of these factories like Chafu where they can churn out products in the hundreds of thousands. So I think this is able to provide a little bit of a reality around what a mold tool is, why it costs what it does, the size of it, the, the uh, special uh, requirements involved in manufacturing, but also understanding what is involved in making a design decision that res results in the right kind of tool for the product that you are developing. Like 90% of the products you buy are an injection molded plastic part with a circuit board in it. The fusion of how do you make the circuit board, how do you make the injection molded part, how do you assemble it, is going to be relevant to like pretty much everybody who's ever going to design anything. Seeing those things happen just completes the picture.